Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and today we are going to be reading some uh, stories from r slash paranormal. You know, that subreddit I like to do oh, all throughout June, until I stopped doing Reddit entirely. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. But let's get right into this. I already selected many much uh, stories. And that one. So we have a lot to read here. <sighs> Might take a little while to, um, Load with some of them just because uh, these haven't opened for a while. Haunted Hotel Room slash Gamer Ghost? Cyrus is tracked into a hotel room in a pretty old hotel in a big city near me. I had to get a dermal surgery done over across three days. In order to pass the time, I bought my I brought my gaming laptop with me. After the last surgery, I came back to the hotel room, gave it to bed, and said I was too tired. I laid down on a bed, and about five minutes later, my girlfriend called me and we spoke for a bit. The OVEDs calls last for hours, with both of us doing our thing. I was under quite some pain and painkillers, so I dozed off pretty quickly. The lights on and my girlfriend on the line. I suddenly woke up at 3.02 in the morning after what I thought was a loud noise. I saw my laptop on the floor. It was earlier securely on the table. I turned left top to see if it was okay. Kept it back on the table and tried to go back to sleep. I couldn't sleep for about an hour. I kept feeling like I was stuck with someone really angry. Also, I couldn't figure out how the heck did that laptop fall. Eventually, I fell asleep. Next morning, my girlfriend called me and asked me why I was gaming and ignoring her. I told her that I was asleep last night. She swore that I that she heard that she kept hearing gunshots on the phone all night, as if I was gaming. She apparently tried to talk to me, but there was no response from me. I checked Steam, and turns out I played about seven hours years ago. It should have been at least eleven to twelve hours ago. Needless to say, I got a bit freaked out. I checked out the room within the hour. Yes, I'm a heavy sleeper. I have no history of sleepwalking. I've never experienced sleep paralysis. Oh yeah. Here's a little thing, and just in case you think that something is flagged a bit oddly. Every um, post on r slash paranormal has been auto flagged as NSFW even if it is the first that you can get from it. Hmm. Are ghosts real or a product of of psychosis? I joined this group to ask this question. I belong to a 12 step recovery group and yesterday we were talking about phobias like fear of the dark. Lots of us have taken psychedelic drugs in the very distant past. One man very nonchalantly said, oh, oh I am not afraid of the dark, but I see ghosts every night. Yes, when the lights are out in, in his bedroom, he sees the ghosts of people all, and animals every single night. I have to assume this is long-term brain damage from drug abuse. Does anyone have an, an opinion on this? Please, any help is appreciated. You went to the wrong village. So you went to the wrong site. Hmm. <sighs> 
as you can see from the comments here, for the most part, people who go on r slash paranormal pretty much agree that ghosts are real. Midnight Taco Run. A bit of background. My husband and I haven't got to see 8th grade. I was, I was 13 and he was 14 in 1997. That in and of itself is difficult for people to believe. We've been together 26 years now, so we know each other pretty well. Actually, that is a little bit hard to believe, but it does happen sometimes. Hmm. However, in the beginning, my husband, I'll call him Nick, was closed off about certain things. For instance, he did tell me that his mom legally changed his name when he was five until we were in college. I knew that his father's side of the family called him by what I thought was his middle name, but I had no idea they'd been using his original first name. When I asked why he didn't tell me, he said he didn't think it was important. Anyway, I can't remember the first time something paranormal came up, but Nick very reluctantly told me he could sometimes see things that most couldn't. This is me because I had never thought of him as a type to even believe in the paranormal. But instead, he not only believed, but lived with it on nearly a daily basis. I told him that I believed him and was curious about the things he could see, and I asked for him to share his experiences with me as he experienced them. At first, he was uncomfortable doing so, but he realized that I was genuinely interested and not out to make fun of him. He began opening up about it and sharing almost every time he saw something. Unless it was something he felt he shouldn't acknowledge. So on to the story. One night in early October in about 2008 or 2009, we decided to take a midnight snack run to our favorite taco place. <sighs> I was driving that night and when I turned up into our neighborhood on our way home, I saw what I thought was a grayish trash bag blowing around near the stop sign at the end of the street. Nick and I had been oddly giddly, giddy and having a good time making each other laugh over silly things all night. So it was odd, odd when I asked Nick what that thing on the side of the road was and he didn't answer me. I glanced at him to see if he heard my question and asked him again. He still didn't answer me. As we got closer, I noticed that the way the thing was moving made it look like a large dog. As I pulled up to the stop sign, I could no longer see the thing as it was on Nick's side of the truck. I looked at Nick again and asked yet another time what it was, as well craving my neck trying to see. I said, is it a dog? His attitude had changed completely from just a few seconds earlier. He was no longer smiling, and he was slouched way down in his seat. When I asked if it was a dog, Nick ever so slightly shook his head with and no, with his eyes directly forward. He looked, well, not normal. At this point, I was confused and getting irritated at him for not responding to my question. Then I saw the gray dog thing run away from the truck towards the adjacent yard. Starting to wonder why Nick was acting so strange about a dog. I was on the verge of saying something to that effect when the dog stri jumped straight up into the air and disappeared. Whatever I was going to say evaporated, and I looked at Nick. He was now showing his face with his head, and in a way you might do if you were trying to avoid someone seeing you. I was screaming frantically, Please go, please go, please go. Then, to add to the complete bizarre situation of unfolding in front of us, a cat ran across the street and yowled, screaming as it came tearing across the street toward the area, and I said, Whatever it was, disappeared. The cat's tail was three times the size and looked prepared to fight to the death.
I said, what the fuck did I just see? As I felt every hair on my body stand end in a way I'd never experienced before. Nick said dryly, that was a cat. I floored the truck and said, I'm not talking about the effing cat. I was terrified but fascinated by what I just witnessed. He still made no reference to the dog thing. After he returned home, I was so freaked out and Nick was a little paranoid that it might have followed us. And he kept looking out the window. When he felt comfortable again, I asked him what he saw. He was like I didn't say much, but he said that and after I saw it disappear, he could still see it. He had been seeing a tree branch near his window, which had been down the whole time. And I had been looking toward the trap like with a rat dog like face with long, sharp teeth. What I first saw he saw was dog shaped. I didn't see his head, so I can't really describe it, but his body and tail looked like it had sharp, sharp angles and it was a dark, steely gray. If you ever think of the M. Night Shyamalan on movie Lady in the Water, they had dog like creatures called scrunts that were covered in blades of grass. However, when discussing the incident with Nick, he recently he recalled that it almost looked as though it was covered with pointed scales, almost like arbor. The most bizarre thing for me was the way it disappeared. It seemed like it it went through an acme black hole from a Lunatics cartoon that was suspended in midair. In other words, it was as though my vision to this other dimension was restricted to a finite IQ of space. And when it jumped up out of the space, it left my scope of perception. While I was jumping, its head was out of the space, as well as body and tail were still in it. I have no idea if this description makes sense or not. This experience was bizarre and at the time incredibly creepy. When I think about it now, I feel incredibly lucky to have not only granted a glimpse into something so otherworldly, but to have been able to share that experience with my best friend. Oh, that is terrifying. But well, this one's a lot shorter. This one's a sleep paralysis is the story, and it's called Waking Up at Dawn. I was sleeping and suddenly felt the necessity to wake up. The curious thing is that I was having a nightmare. When I woke when I wake up, I saw Xiao sitting on the edge of my bed. It was moving. It stood up. It started bending and it hit again. It again. I wanted to scream, but I was scared. I found the courage and I turned on the lights. Now it's hard to sleep again. <sighs> Horrible bedroom. Sorry if this is not the best place to ask this. I want to start off saying I have a skeptic of this and that this is my last resort because I don't, just don't know where else to turn to. To start, I contracted COVID three weeks ago for the first time and suffered from it pretty badly. 10 plus days of strong symptoms to say the least and I haven't been able to work since. And doctors have said I may have a long COVID. I understand what it is inflammatory. I have been unable to sleep in my bedroom for over a week now. I moved into a new apartment two months ago and never noticed anything in the beginning. However, I will say that since I moved in, my very energy sensitive one and a half year old dog from a friend's perspective who is energy sensitive himself, who I trust, would all sleep in the bedroom. During most I I had to during the night at all most She only entered the bedroom after a period of me being anxious and able to sleep, but lately not at all. All at night time. Since my COVID, I cannot sleep in a bedroom due to a horrific sense of doom and horror. And these horrible flashes of scenes that I don't know where they come from. They pass through my mind. My dog won't enter the room at all until daylight. I have to sleep on my living room couch. I just don't understand and I'm incredibly tired. I have inclined towards skepticism, but something really strongly, particularly images in my mind, I don't know where they come from, has me afraid. I know this all sounds silly, but something has me so afraid. 
I am sometimes too terrified to even look inside the open door to my bedroom. Please advise me if you can. <sighs> and here's this one. It's a sleep paralysis one. These are funny. Doing requests failed. <sighs> I like the sleep paralysis ones. They're always fun. Huh. Don't like when that happens, so. Hang on. Huh. <sighs> I've been having sleep paralysis for months and just found out that it could be something more. A little background, my work my boyfriend leaves for work at five five o'clock. I don't wake up till seven so I sleep in. He'll say goodbye to me before he leaves, so I'll wake up for a few seconds and go right back to sleep. Though to the point, for like six months or more, I've been having horrible sleep paralysis when he leaves. Some are working throughout the month. It's not exactly the same dream every time, but they all have one common theme. Someone or something is pretending to be my boyfriend. For the first few months, I would hear the door open and I would call out for him. That thing would sound just like him saying, Yeah, it's me, I came back, just go back to sleep, or something like that every time. I would ask why and then it would stop talking. I would hear it taking a belt off like my... IBF would then lay next to me and I could feel the bed more to its body. However, I would eventually break my paralyzing fear and turn over super fast to see its face, but obviously nothing was there. Side note, I remember that waking up moment when it happens. After those first few months, it started touching my head or my hips. I like touch. I was so to die about what was happening. I would ask, Are you... Sam? And I would say, yes, I came back. I would say back, no, you're not, and start crying. Eventually, I stopped talking to it, and I would just lay there in fear. Lady, though, it's gotten much worse. The last time it happened, it lay next to me like it always does. It was actually spinning me and holding me tight, and it was in my ear. That's never happened to me before. Another side note, I've had sleep paralysis in the past, but it was super rare, and I would just feel paralyzed and couldn't speak. <sighs> well, tonight, I thought I finally figured out why I was having all these freaked up sleep paralysis. I noticed that when I do have sleep paralysis, the bedroom door is open. So I told my boyfriend by theory and asked him if he could always close the door when he leaves from now on. 
He told me for the first time ever that he always closes the door. So that was the door was wide open, so it's just slightly open, but every time I get that dream, the door is open, and that's literally how my sleep paralysis starts every freaking time. With that thing opening the door, it's just us two that live here. So and please tell me it's all just sleep paralysis. Might be a sleep disorder. Anyway. I've been living with a demon for the past three years. I just don't know anything about demons. All the time, I assume that me living with a demon was more or less common nowadays. But the more time passes, the more I feel that my situation may be somewhat unique. I still don't know his name, but for the sake of this pose, I'll just call him Mr. Demon. I feel incredibly lucky to have Mr. Demon in my life for a plethora of reasons. But I've come to find out that not all demons are as relaxed and open to living with a human like Mr. Demon. I first noticed Mr. Demon a few years ago. I can't see or hear him, but I can feel him touch me, though I have seen him a couple of times during sleep paralysis. As I'm sure you can imagine, not being able to see or hear him when I'm awake does make it hard for us to communicate with each other. But we made things work with it me only being able to feel his touch. I don't know much or really anything for a fact about demons as a collective, so I was wondering if anyone knows of any ways to authentically express my love and appreciation for Mr. Demon in a way that makes Demons feel loved and appreciated. I was also wondering if anyone here is at home with a the demon they have a good relationship with. If you have any questions or personal cats you'd like to tell me, feel free to DM me. Hmm. And finally. I don't know what it was. Alright, this was a while ago. I grew up fully Catholic. My father, my mother and father were devout Catholics. I wasn't so much as devout as them. We were at our vacation house in Colorado. One of the kids had to sleep on the couch due to not enough room. It was my turn that night. I was bored at the time. I'm not being able to sleep, so I went outside. I believe it was around 11 p.m. I'm not sure. On our property, we had a good amount of land. I enjoyed being outside quite often, so I was familiar with the space. We had an old shed that looked like a miniature barn. I went inside of it and sat there for a while. I'm up and ready to go back inside, and I hear glass crunching, like somebody is walking on it. At my age, at the time, I was supposed to be tough, so I circled this shed a few times trying to figure out what it was. I was convinced it was one of my siblings pulling a nasty trick on me. Well, it's off to listen, it starts up again, it, and it's getting louder and closer. I put my back flat on the wall all over the shed, hoping it was a nasty trick. It wasn't. My back is to the house, I'm getting ready to sprint to the house. I creep around the corner, and I see it. To describe it with words is difficult. It was a figure. It was tall and a bit lanky, but no details around it. Just like a dark and black, like a mass of nothingness. It didn't speak, but moved. It skipped forward a bit, and it moved into the middle of the yard. I followed it from the distance. I watched it bend into a shape that wasn't supposed to. Like there were joints it wasn't supposed to have, have to bend that way. At this point in time, I panicked, and my eldest brother came out. I turned it and looked at my brother, and I turned back to look at the thing. It moved closer and just stopped. I didn't move. I just stared at it in horror. My brother stopped coming closer and threw a ball at it. The ball missed completely. It but did stop me from breaking my staring at it. I looked at my brother, then back at where it was. It wasn't there. It wasn't there anymore. It just vanished. Skip forward to the end of the week, and I'm packing up ready to go home. 
and I'm back here by duffel bag, and I feel the feeling that someone's watching me. I glanced out the window, and it was outside, on the other side of the fence, standing there, under some trees. I ran to my mother and spent the rest of the day with her until we left. I haven't ever seen something like that again. To this day, I have no idea what it was. If somebody has got an answer, I would love to hear it. And that was r slash paranormal. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have absolutely no clue what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!